I, I'll introduce myself again, my background and uh, my publish, my books that I've published and uh, my course offerings. These are uh, books that I've written in the past few years, and this is my most recent one on quiet, quiet woodworking. This talks mostly about the, uh, the transition of hand tools and the advantages of uh, hand tool woodworking compared to uh, full-on machinery and power tools. Of course, there is an intermediate hybrid stage. And this is my journey from my former high-tech career of 30 years to my uh, woodworking furniture making career of 30 years. Now, if you add that up, it doesn't make sense. I must be about 90 years old or something. But it is a little just with considerable overlap. I, I did work, uh, woodworking part-time for a number of years. And then only in the last 14 years, or 13 years that I've been doing it full-time. This is a starting a woodworking business book. It's pretty good. It's been revised, by the way. And this is uh, when I delved into uh, wood art. This is a uh, wood artist. It's all about um, moving away from uh, furniture and more into organic uh, sculptural work. And uh, it's a very interesting book, actually. And this is uh, a whole book on uh, on a progression of uh, of a design to a piece of furniture. So this covers uh, very good photography on uh, all the steps and techniques I use from my design stage, the formative stage, and then uh, what I, what I, the criteria I use to design furniture right through to the making of the furniture. So these books are available at my uh, woodskills.com website. I have several woodworking courses from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design course and right through to uh, a design and making course that, it, that you actually get the book with the, uh, with the course and something on Kamiko. And if you're going to invest in, uh, in hand planes, always spend the extra money, look for a, a premium brand, you won't regret it because uh, most of my hand planes are 20 years old, if not more, and they're like new, so they, uh, they last forever, they last a lifetime, so you really, really want to invest in, uh, in a good premium hand plane so you don't have to replace it and, and buy it twice or buy it three times. Then, of course, now that we've the you know, relative flat two surfaces, of course, we have to joint and edge. So there's different ways of doing this. Now, I could use this system, or I can show you a system I've developed to do this. So I'll remove these, uh, these bench accessories, and I'll show you what I've done. This is a, uh, this is portable. And what this does is attaches to the bench and serves to, uh, to hold the, uh, your work up. So I would uh, clamp it into the face slice and use this so it removes. And uh, now I have two similar workbenches, and it's, it's uh, portable between the workbenches in my case. So I, I just leave it on one bench, and I removed it to bring it over here. So I'm just in solid. You can either uh, use just a single screw, which works fine. It's fairly, because it locks in with the, uh, with the dowels. Now, I do offer plans for this on my uh, website. Got a key or something. I'll lock it in with a hex key. So it's really designed to be removable fairly quickly. And what it does is, uh, there, it's locked in. What it does, I'll show you now. So if I'm jointing this board, the grain, I've already determined the orientation of the grain, the direction of the grain. So I'm, I'm marking it from... This is a little bit too long to just hold in the uh, in the face twice. So what I do is I uh, because the uh, has numerous holes, I can insert and remove uh, dogs in the holes. So I'll just uh, I'll just set it to that dog, and that's what it does. You see, so I'll just. I can hand point this now. Should I use a wood body one or a metal body? So you want to use also a long sole plane when you're doing this. Let's try this guy. Ideally, the uh, the width of the blade is uh, is at least the width of the. I need to back up. The shades are a bit too thick there. So this is how you do it, by the way, using a plane hammer. 
So that, that retracts the blade. That's better. So that's the idea. So this would, uh, I periodically test for square here using one of the uh, reference surfaces. Along the uh, along the surface, so this uh, this process creates uh, two parallel dress surfaces along with a an edge, so you can begin to uh, rip this down to uh, to size for your furniture components. I mean, it's not the best optimal piece of wood. I wouldn't even use it. I wouldn't only use this portion because of that large knot, and possibly use the, uh, the shorter pieces. But uh, that's the idea. So I'm not going to dwell too much on this because I need to introduce some other. What I'd like to talk about is, uh, by the way, this makes a huge mess. I do discuss the, uh, the board jack I just introduced, the uh, portable board jack. It's actually covered in this book, along with uh, individual plans of my wood still site. But we'll talk about a little bit about workbenches. Workbench I have here is optimized for the type of work I do and the fact that I'm left-handed, but uh, it is set up for a right-handed person right now. So the left, the, uh, the face vise is at the left, the tail vises will be at the right, but I don't actually have tail vises on this, aside from the, uh, the tail vises I've improvised and uh, works in conjunction with the uh, the end vice, the end vice is quite good on this. So I have different options to work, to work from that end if I need to, but I have developed my system with my, uh, my accessories to be able to do uh, work here. And what I'll do is I'll remove this uh, board jack. I normally have it uh, permanently attached to my other workbench, so I can, I can do it there. I can do all the uh, edge joining there. The workbenches are uh, they're kind of difficult to find now. Uh, I don't even think these are Veritas workbenches, by the way, from Lee Valley. I don't even think they market them anymore. They, I think they market components, the slabs. They, so you need to create the base yourself and all that. So I, I could be mistaken, but I don't seem to find it in the catalog. So that's that. Right. So again, this is the portable board jack with some offsets. Some bosses so they fit into the, uh, the the dog holes on your bench and the whole arrangement is arbitrary you can do whatever you want I mean in this case I'm using standard three-quarter inch uh, dogs metal brass dogs in this case so I tend to use uh, wooden dogs for the most part but this this one here a little catch. Yes, these are dogs that I've created with a leather face. I tend to use these because I prefer uh, wood on wood when I'm uh, when I'm hand planing and not having the, the blade go into some metal. So, and again, let's go back to the workbench. The optimal length, minimum length, is about six. This is about six feet, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, close to six feet, seventy-two inches, with a face vise, an head vise, or a tail vise. And uh, another important point about uh, workbench is just uh, to keep it away from the wall. Now, some people have it against the wall, but when you have it against the wall, you tend to uh, not, never use that second part. And they're, these benches are designed, they're symmetric, so they're designed for, for you to work on either side. So it's kind of a waste if you uh, have it against the wall, because all it becomes is a storage thing. The two well is uh, enough of a storage for uh, components and small tools that I'm using. So I keep it a distance from the uh, from the wall. In this case, I'll go to my closest point. It's about three feet. And uh, so I've got enough room to work. This is a, a recent addition. This holds some uh, some restored uh, vintage hand planes, some plow planes. And uh, so I'll actually I'll give a demonstration of a plow plane. 